and welcome to Verdictum. I am Ananya Singh and you're watching today's legal news where we apprise you with the recent important legal developments across the country. Here are the headlines. CJI refuses to permit urgent mentioning of fresh plea against Tamil Nadu Sanatan Dharm Eradication Conference and hate speech asked to follow procedure. Supreme Court defers Manish Sisodia's bail plea to October 4th. Congress MLA moves High Court for Constitution of SIT to investigate new violence. Finds out he is also accused in the case. UP Bar Council protesting against Hapur Lathi charge calls off strike after talks with Chief Secretary. Axis Finance challenges NCLT order allowing Z Sony merger. Now let's take a detailed look on the headlines. A fresh writ petition against the Sanatan Dharm Eradication Conference held in Tamil Nadu earlier this month was mentioned before the Supreme Court today. The petition was placed before a bench comprising the Chief Justice of India, D.Y. Chandrachur, along with Justice J.V. Pardiwala and Justice Manoj Mishra, who refused to permit the mentioning and the petitioners were asked to follow the procedure prescribed for urgent listing instead. The petition highlighted that the conference was held in Chennai on September 2nd with the intent to eradicate a specific religion. It was also alleged that the conference was attended by Tamil Nadu Hindu Religious Charitable Endowment Minister Sekar Babu and the Sports Minister for Tamil Nadu Udayanidhi Stalin, among other prominent figures. It was further claimed that Thol Thiruma Valavan, a member of parliament, had openly called for genocide against Brahmins and urged the OBCs and STs to unite against them. The petitioner sought an instruction to the Tamil Nadu state government to prohibit such conferences and a report by the state police as to how such a conference was permitted to take place. It was also prayed that FIRs against the perpetrators, including Udayanidhi Stalin, be registered and them and their followers be abstained from making further hate speeches against the Sanatan Dharma. A bench of Justice Sanjeev Khanna and Justice S. V. N. Bhatti of the Supreme Court today deferred the hearing of the bail plea of former Deputy Chief Minister of Delhi, Manish Sisodia, to October 4th. Sisodia is accused in the Delhi excise policy scam case and the case is being probed by two central agencies, namely the Enforcement Directorate and the Central Bureau of Investigation. He was arrested on February 26 this year and has been in custody ever since. Sisodia has contended that the excise policy in regard of which he is accused of money laundering was made after deliberation with various officers, ministers and the Lieutenant Governor of Delhi and was framed in a transparent manner. The ED, however, claims that Sisodia has been unable to show that he is not involved in any of the alleged activities relating to the proceeds of crime and that it was mandatory that he be prosecuted under the provisions of the Money Laundering Act and the Prevention of Corruption Act. Congress MLA Maman Khan approached the Punjab and Haryana High Court seeking constitution of a special investigation team to investigate the incidents of communal violence in Haryana's new district. However, during the course of hearing, it was discovered that Khan himself is an accused in the case. The court was informed by additional Advocate General Deepak Sabarwal that petitioner's call records reveal that Khan was in touch with one of the accused in the case a day prior to the incident. Khan had also allegedly posted on WhatsApp and Facebook that nobody needs to worry as he had fought for them in Vidhan Sabha and will fight for them in Mewat also, which is also one of the affected areas due to the communal tension. The matter was placed before Justice Vikas Behel, who sought the state government's response on the petition filed by Khan. As the course of hearing changed against Khan, his counsel requested the court that he be given the liberty to seek appropriate remedy for protection against coercive steps. The request was allowed by the High Court and the matter was posted for October 19th for further hearing. The Bar Council of Uttar Pradesh last night announced calling off the state-wide strike by lawyers following talks with the Chief Secretary Durga Shankar Mishra. The lawyers of the UP Bar Council along with those of the Allahabad High Court Bar Association went on a strike on August 30th after the police lathi charged on them a day earlier. The lathi charge was a result of a peaceful protest by the advocates against an alleged false criminal case being filed against one of their female colleagues and her father. UP Bar Council President Shiv Kishore Gaur informed that the talks with the Chief Secretary were very positive and he assured that cases against advocates across the state during the movement will be dropped, 
Hence, the strike was called off. The strike by lawyers was criticized by the High Court on several occasions. And a single judge bench of the High Court comprising Justice Shitit Shailendra had observed that the reason behind present strike being an event of brutal lati charge on the lawyers practicing in Harpur Court may have some justification behind agitation. But at the same time, the strike cannot be a solution to it. Access Finance has approached the National Company Law Appellate Tribunal, challenging the order of the National Company Law Tribunal that allowed the merger of Z Entertainment and Sony Pictures. Earlier on September 5th, IDBI Bank has also appealed against the NCLT order. The merger of the two companies is a significant development in the media and entertainment industry. As after the merger, the entity will be the biggest in the nation, with an estimated combined revenue of $10 billion. The merger was allowed by the Mumbai bench of NCLT, headed by H. V. Subbarao and Madhusena on August 10th. The merger is opposed by creditors for having a direct bearing on their interests. That was all on today's legal news. Thank you and keep watching Verdictum. And subscribe to our channel and download the Verdictum app on iOS and Android to keep yourself updated with authentic legal news.